Hey Eurovision fans and uh, this is Blogo Vision I've prepared for you the digest for September 2018 about the upcoming Eurovision Song Contest. Let's do it! <laughs> Now we know where the Eurovision is going to be hosted. It's going to be in Tel Aviv, in Israel, not in Jerusalem, as some of you might have thought or as was discussed before. The venue will be Expo Convention Center and the semifinals will take place on May 14, 16, and then the final will be May 18. So probably you should start Googling your tickets. But then one thing that happened made fans very angry. What is that? It's that the amount of places, the amount of seats is not uh, what many of you might have expected compared to previous years. So in total, the uh, uh, place, the venue can fit only 7,000 people for now, of which 3,000 will be given to different delegations and EBU members and so on and so forth, which leaves us only 4,000 tickets for general public such as us, uh, which is basically nothing. And also what you can imagine is that as soon as the dates were known, the hotel prices have skyrocketed. So you probably have to start searching for a place to stay in Tel Aviv right now if you are planning to come to the uh, finals. Then, second news for September 2018 is who will be participating in next year's Eurovision and so far 37 countries have been confirmed which leaves us only six countries uh, of 43 countries that participated last year uh, still waiting to be confirmed one of those countries is Australia uh, there are rumors although and quite strong rumors that not only will Australia be participating in 2019's Eurovision but also they will make their own national uh, show to choose a um, finalist to go to Eurovision, a national final. Italy is the only country from the Big Five, uh, one of the founders of Eurovision, who still haven't confirmed if they are taking part in the next Eurovision Song Contest. Last year they ended up with a great result, Italy came fifth and in televotes even third, which would lead us to think that they would jump onto the opportunity to have it again uh, in 2019, but well, still not known. The third country which is still not confirmed is Russia, but on the one hand they might be just a little bit late with the application and they will be still participating. And what we also know is that uh, Filip Kirkorov, a Russian producer and singer who is very often behind uh, Russian artists for Eurovision, has already started working on new Eurovision songs, but for which country? That is a good question, because last year he worked um, on a song for Moldova, which ended up in top 10. Let's see which country he has chosen to uh, encourage to go to Eurovision this year. Now, Armenia and Moldova still haven't been confirmed. Uh, last year they didn't confirm basically till late October, so we shouldn't be very worried about that. Um, Armenia's Sivak didn't qualify to the final despite all the predictions and the great performance, uh, but uh, still they are doing pretty well and it's a rare non qualify for them, so we are hoping for them to appear uh, at the next year's contest. Uh, Moldova ended up in top 10, so that means that they should be very much willing to participate also this year. Uh, they've been very encouraged by the previous year's result. And the last country to still confirm, or maybe not, is San Marino. Uh, actually, they didn't get very good results last year, and they received also quite negative comments from the uh, Italian uh, fans of Eurovision and Italian community, so they've been quite disappointed and probably now in doubt whether they should uh, take part in the next year's contest. And now to news such as relating to last year's contestants, who you still might remember, such as the Czech artist Mikolas Josef. Uh, you all remember him, it was an amazing performance with a lot of tricks. <laughs> and uh, he was the most cheered artist at the grand final according to the audience. Uh, well, first thing you actually see in this picture right here is the, that he has dyed his hair blonde. <laughs> Do you like it? 
do not share in the comments, share your thoughts. But on the other <laughs> news and more important ones, he has been working now and practically finished his new song, Me Gusta. Uh, no, do not let it fool you. It's not in Spanish, even though recently he released a Spanish version of his Eurovision song, Like To Me. It is in English, but according to um, Nicholas, it's going to have this Spanish feel. Yeah. Uh, it was recorded in Toronto, in Canada, and will premiere actually in Spain. Well, maybe it makes sense since it's called Me Gusta. Sweden's Benjamin Ingrosso has delighted us with his new album, his debut album, which has just come out. It's called Identification. And uh, plus to that, he has also released a music video for Paradise. And this is not his own work, this is done in uh, collaboration with uh, French uh, DJ Offenbach. Yeah? who is very, very famous, and uh, the video is super entertaining. It's a talent show uh, related video, there are judges on the panel, there are all kinds of silly contestants, so you won't be bored watching this video for sure. Plus the uh, chorus and the tune, it just gets stuck in your head and you will be always uh, walking, remembering that boom, 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 mm. <laughs> check it out. The links are after the video, uh, check them out below. To the other news, Germany's uh, Michael Schulte, who um, actually reached the fourth position at last year's Eurovision, has also made us happy with his new single, Never Let You Down. Of course, he's again going romantic and, uh, well, that's uh, Michael, that's what we love him for, don't we? And it's his first release ever since the Eurovision song that he presented, so it's a big, big thing. Spain's Amaya, who participated in Eurovision 2018, is continuing to surprise us and continuing to be very much in the media headlines. Recently she made headlines because she has collaborated with Bono from U2 for their Madrid concert. The concert was, of course, sold out, but they did not appear on stage together, on the one hand, on the other hand, what happened is that uh, Bono and Amaya had pre-recorded um, the song, the duet of uh, Tu Cancion for uh, U2's uh, recent concert in Madrid. So Amaya was not physically there, but she was there as well, her vocals were there. The idea of this collaboration is to encourage women all over the world to join a special kind of movement, uh, basically called the Women of the World take over and under this hashtag Amaya has announced a special project that uh, fans are encouraged to record themselves singing to Cancion and uh, upload their voice to various social media of their choice uh, this way encouraging the whole movement. Spain has also revealed the 18 contestants for the first gala of their national final called uh, Operacion Triunfo 2018 and one of those guys will get to represent Spain next year. And we'll finish off with the news about Malta, the Maltese artist who we all loved last year, Cristabel, has now married her longtime boyfriend and also a water polo uh, star. His name is Jordan Camilleri, and you can check out the photo right here, it's pretty amazing. Uh, though Cristabel didn't qualify to the finals last year, uh, she delivered a wonderful performance, so uh, she's still a famous singer in Malta, uh, and we are super happy for her, and according to her own comments, she couldn't be happier. This is the best moment of her life. And this is all news for today, it was great to share them with you, and you can hear my parrot singing at the background, making me smile and hopefully making you all smile as well. I'll show him to you after we're done. So subscribe to uh, my channel here called Vision. I will deliver you the latest news uh, about Eurovision and its contestants and of course a lot of fun jokes and um, please check out our previous videos here and here um, of uh, Mikolas Josef interview and uh, some other nice stuff. <laughs> And of course, leave your comments and uh, stay tuned.